welcome back today we will start with the detailing of each technique uh, regarding the posture assessment so last in the last introductory class of uh, physical method i mentioned that for posture assessment there are varieties of uh, small small tools available so uh, at the very beginning what types of tools or techniques that we used to use for posture analysis then slowly how it has been modified how it has gone into more detail that we will take further now here question is it is not always uh, like posture when we are talking about posture analysis or assessment it's not always the whole body depending on the requirement depending on the type of activities people are doing we choose tool and we take part of it okay so if you look at uh, long back maybe 30 40 years back what used to happen most of the work was very physical in nature so everything was quite manual right more than 50 years back before our industrial revolution and all so people used to do lot of manual activity lot of heavy load lifting lot of awkward posture uh, lot of uh, no shift in the uh, whole body uh, posture during the work shift right now based on such thing those days some tools were developed slowly over the period of time due to uh, different changes in our working nature working posture it has been observed that uh, in recent days postures are very much static in nature and it happens that mostly our limbs are in uh, you know active condition specific, specifically upper limbs okay so we uh, we sit on a particular posture we uh, occupy a sitting posture and we bend we do activities and uh, such things although it is not completely true for construction workers or you know shop floor workers it's not true for them but most of the cases uh, in case of office workers what is the kind of majority of the things right now they occupy a sitting posture so for them though the earlier tool was not applicable and slowly therefore they have developed some other tool which is very specific for the uh, sitting posture after that also there was some realization that not only sitting posture there are some activities like when we developed some sit stand workstation right so in case of sit stand workstation and for many such cases where it is necessary for us to understand the whole body posture then also there are some changes in some postural assessment posture assessment tool more emphasis is on the duration of exposure some cases frequency some cases you know uh, specific body parts uh, of a posture of specific body parts are important so we will not be able to cover everything however we will try to cover maximum possible uh, in this particular course so let us start with the very uh, you know old tool that is the ovaku working posture and assessment or analysis tool so first let us understand what we are going to cover during this particular sec you know set of uh, or section of the uh, of this posture assessment tool or posture assessment technique so first we will be going for was ovaku working posture anal analysis system then very commonly and widely used tool that is the rula rapid upper limb as analysis third rapid entire body analysis manual handling assessment chart or msc then manual handling how do we do manual handling at work and at the end maybe we will take it up the quick exposure exposure checklist which is very common also in now it in, you know in current scenario 
So let us start with the OVACU working posture analysis system. So it's this is the very old tool and as per my understanding and uh, from many other uh, no researchers understanding this is the primitive and very old tool in case of posture assessment. So this was developed in 1970. Uh, this is a company uh, named Obaco and from there only this particular uh, no, tools name came into existence. So it was a steel company in Finland and uh, there uh, the safety and health department basically developed this particular tool. So basic component of various other tool such as Rula, Reba all are actually derived from this particular basic tool. Okay. Now, what is the what was the concern when they developed this uh, technique or developed this particular tool? They realized during the work assessment that when somebody is working in some non-neutral posture, then there is a chance or there is there are some reports that they have some discomfort or uh, uh, for a long period uh, some disability for those particular body parts. From that point of observation they started inquiring how do we um, how do we try to understand or how do we assess the working posture so that before going into discomfort level or before going into disorder level we can prevent it and we can modify the posture modify the working posture and therefore we will be able to save cost okay so because whenever there is a company and uh, there is a uh, you know posture related disorder and they go for you know medical uh, uh, medical uh, treatment then there is always what will happen the cost is associated with the uh, company or with that particular institution so from that perspective they started inquiring and once they started inquiring they found yes some to some extent we can assess the bad work posture or awkward posture and that work posture also we can give some kind of grading. Now if we give a grading to some working posture from that grading we can understand this posture if it is extremely uh, you know towards the higher side of awkwardness then this particular portion need some kind of intervention. Normally posture is very much associated with the working tool, working machineries, working uh, workstation or work condition right. If there is some kind of sharp edge is present in your work uh, environment or you know work test you will try to avoid it and you will occupy some kind of posture which is not uh, normal or non uh, is not neutral or near neutral it will go on the awkward direction right so if something need to be worked on the very far from your body then also there is a, always a chance that you are going to occupy some kind of awkward posture. Therefore, if at the very beginning there is a chance for us to evaluate or to analyze or to assess that where my posture is graded then there is always a chance for us to rectify it at the design phase and there will be always a chance to have less discomfort, less disorder and less medical cost associated to that particular work. Okay. So, from that perspective only this particular tool was developed and now we are going to discuss it further. So, what is the procedure to go ahead with this particular tool? First is observation. What you are going to observe? You are going to observe the working 
posture. Now here question is which posture you are going to observe because if you look at a particular working posture or you know working scenario the posture is not always constant right it keeps on changing it is very much dynamic in nature. So our observation is based on our objective of the study. Here there is some general guideline we try to observe those postures which is frequently occurring in a particular shift, particular work shift. So, some postures which are frequently occurring, okay, maybe uh, in a particular cycle or in a particular work shift, if a particular posture is occurring very frequently, then we are going to observe or we are going to assess the uh, assess that particular posture. What is the reason behind it? Reason is if you are occupying a particular posture very frequently that means that is your exposure level that is going to decide the exposure level. So, that is going to tell you that what kind of postural load you have on your body. So, what is the kind of musculoskeletal stress or strain is getting generated due to that particular uh, awkward occupied posture. This is one thing that is frequently occupied posture in a particular uh, shift or particular exposure level. Second observation or second selection can be the max the uh, no apparently which is very much awkward in nature that kind of posture also you can check for your analysis. Third is the kind of posture what you are holding for maximum period of time in your whole shift. One is frequently occurring means you are holding a posture, you are changing it again, you are holding that particular posture. So, that is the kind of frequency you have to count. The third one is the kind of posture that you are holding for longer duration. Those postures are also kind of dangerous or not dangerous, I would not, I can't say dangerous, I will say the, uh, the posture is a concern. Okay, so that kind of posture are also kind of concern. So, two major uh, uh, selection criteria one is frequently occupied posture and the posture which is being uh, you know uh, the worker is holding for longer hours. So, from the observation you have to understand which posture you are going to assess. You have always uh, freedom that you can uh, assess all varieties of posture. However, depending on your objective, depending of your study uh, no, um, aim, you should decide which posture you are going to adapt. Once uh, uh, you are going to select. Now, once you select that particular posture, you have to understand which task is associated with that particular posture because when you are holding a particular posture definitely you are connected with a particular task. So, you are going to do that at the very beginning of your posture analysis. So, first is your observation and second is selecting that which task or which posture you are going to analyze it. Once you have that then what you have to do? You have to score for different aspect that we are going to get, uh, understand in the next slide. So, you have to give scoring. Now, once you do the scoring, automatically you will put it into pre-computed table and from there you are going to assess the risk. This is the whole procedure for OBACU working posture analysis system or assessment tool. Okay. Now, let us understand this particular picture. If you look at OBACU working posture analysis system or WARS, we have major three areas which we are going to analyze or assess. First is back, second is arm and third is leg. Now, 
if you look at 1970 or 1960 those days these were the major body component were involved into major activities so you know grossly okay so earlier nothing was specific so grossly trunk arm and leg trunk actually holding your whole body upper arm like these arms helps you to lot of do hand movement and legs which uh, you know helps you to occupy different types of uh, posture and also helps to go for the different movements okay so that is why there are only three major component now if you look at in this figure for back we have four gross figures okay four gross postures which can be adapted in industrial situation now here here you will you may have some argument not only this type of you know bending there can be varieties of bending yes theoretically it is possible however if you look at the industrial activities industrial um, you know movements you will see these are the four major movements possible and normally they do this much so what it says that if you are working straight so if you are working straight your spine is in very neutral condition there is no you uh, know bend no uh, problem so it is one okay fine next is bent bent towards forward direction so this is two straight however it is little twisted so you are you know uh, standing straight however you are doing your activity little in the twisted direction so your vision is not on the front side it is either on left side or on the right side right so in that case it is three you can understand if you are straight looking forward direction then it is very natural kind of posture right so that is why it scores score is 1 when you are looking at straight however you are bending little forward then it is 2 if you are straight and doing your activity either on left side or on right side then it is 3 the last one in this particular table is 4 which is you you are bend you are you know in a forward bend condition and either you are working on the left side or right side so you are actually crossing your body midline so here when you are actually crossing your body midline then you are you know uh, you know developing lot of stress on your trunk muscles so that is why gradings were given in this way so for trunk bend uh, uh, sorry straight one bend in forward direction two straight left or right twisted three and bend left or right twisted four now here you again can come you know argue that we can have you know back bend you can have side bending yes it is possible but if you look at the industrial working condition these postures are not normally being used however you will look at the different other adaptation or you know modification in future posture assessment tool there are some more consideration on these aspects clear clear about trunk now coming to the upper limb okay so arm here we have three major posture both limbs on or below the you know shoulder level so this is your shoulder level if you are doing some activity which is below shoulder level so your shoulders are in a kind of resting condition it is not getting any kind of stress so you are having score of 1 now if by chance one hand is below shoulder level and another hand is above shoulder level then as per this figure it is 
टू इट कैन बी बोथ हाँ इधर लेफ्ट हैंड और राइट हैंड इट इज इन द फिगर इट इज वन काइंड इज शोन बट इट कैन बी बोथ हैंड लाइक यू नो लेफ्ट हैंड आप राइट हैंड डाउन और लेफ्ट हैंड डाउन एंड राइट हैंड आप दैट इज होल ऑल पॉसिबल सो दैट इज टू द नेक्स्ट इज थ्री वेन यू आर वर्किंग विथ बोथ हैंड अबाव शोल्डर लेवल of course you can understand it's very easy uh, you can really connect it that what is the kind of stress you will be getting on your shoulder if you are you know working above shoulder level with both hands okay so arm has three posture so back has back or trunk has four postures arm has three postures now for legs we have seven varieties of posture it's it's very interesting over here because if you look at those days lot of stooping activity kneeling kneeling activities you know uh, half be, uh, half sitting activities were uh, need to be done in the industrial situation uh, so it's it has seven kinds of varieties now legs are the only body parts which is actually bearing the whole load of your body right so it is very important for us to know how the legs postures are so what it says that first that is the uh, scoring one it says loading on both limb straight so you know equally so you are standing straight on giving equal pressure on your both both feet and you are working second is loading on one limb and that is straight another is little bend that is two so you know not equal distribution of your body weight on both feet so one has more another has less third is loading on both limb however both limbs are bent okay so you can understand if you are in a half sitting condition without sitting uh, support then what kind of posture it is so that is kind of three loading on one limb however that limb is also kind of bent more stress so it is four loading on one particular limb and that is in a kneeled condition one limb is in a limb uh, kneeled condition that is five body is moved by the limb so you are walking kind of walking okay then it is six and both limbs you know hanging free so you are actually half sitting condition you are doing some activity that is seven so it's very very difficult posture to hold it for longer hours it is really next to impossible if you look at current situation okay so this type of posture need to be avoided very you know uh, at immediate intervention through immediate intervention okay so these are the kind of limb lower limb postures we can have in wash okay so we have back we have leg we have uh, arm so these varieties so if what you have to do for a particular posture once you decide yes this posture need to be uh, need to be assessed what you will do you will check for uh, back first so you will have suppose some this kind of situation okay your back is in this situation so your back score is 3 in your case in it's 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 a you know hypothetical uh, uh, case maybe in your case maybe your uh, arm condition is this to see so your this is your back or trunk this is your arm and maybe somewhere here okay four is your leg suppose so your sc actual score became 3 2 4 now let us see how do we analyze it 
Now these are the details like standing bend we described it arm posture three types and uh, leg posture seven types we discussed it right. Now let us understand how do we get it. Now from this table okay from this table I will come back to this table later from okay. So this is for your load and force u score for this whole posture if you have a weight or force needed which is 10 kg or less then it is 1 if it is between 10 kg to 20 kg it is 2 and if it is more than 20 kg then it is 3 so now suppose for your case it is 2 so you have a postural score of 3 to 4 and load or use of force is 2. So, if this is your combination let us understand how your posture will look like ok. So, back was 3. So, you your observation is on this particular portion ok. Now, your arm was 2. So, this right. So, your again observation is restricted on this particular sector. Now, your leg was 4. So, this particular column. So, you are here, right? This region. This is your region where you your score is lying. Now, based on your load force score which was 2 that means this column you are your score is 4 ultimate your score became 4 your final score for Obaku working posture assessment is 4 now let us go back to the table this is your action category what is says you are here now if it is 1 the final score if it is 1 then there is no action is required to be performed. So, you are in a good condition there is no need to change any kind of posture it is a good posture. If it is 2 then corrective actions required in the newer future. If it is 3 then correction action uh, should be done as soon as possible as this particular example that we adapted that is 4 it says you need to do kind of changes immediately. So, what is there your this particular assessment will tell you that yes this posture what is being adapted in current situation is extremely dangerous. So, what you need to do you need to change it uh, immediately. And what will lead, lead you to that change? Definitely the changes in the work condition, work position, designing of the equipment or machineries or designing of the workstation and many other things. So, then we have to go into uh, further inquiring that what is causing the this particular awkward posture what is causing this you uh, know extremely awkward posture and if we can do changes in that particular causal factor we will be able to correct this posture and from 4 we may reduce either on 3 or 2 ok. See whenever we are doing uh, any kind of activity always there is a risk we cannot avoid any risk however we need to understand risk level should not go beyond the threshold also if it is going beyond the threshold how we are taking it back at the normal so what is the kind of recovery we are giving if some uh, some some cases it is mandatory due to the work demand that this posture need 
to be there or you have to really hold that particular posture you have to make sure that how i am doing the work shift cycle or work rotation so that a particular person is not being exposed towards that particular kind of awkward risk uh, postural risk for longer duration if you can maintain that so that is why posture assessment is important tool however we need to understand kind of exposure level so you know duration of exposure that is very very important if we don't understand that we will not be able to really give the correct uh, no intervention program for those working population it's not that you know there is uh, everything is one no it is not possible because uh, if there is a occupation and if there is uh, some task to be done there is always a risk available and you have to uh, face those risks however you need to understand how do we control it how do we measure it okay so that is why assessing it very very important as you know that it's a very dangerous posture that you are occupying then you can definitely go and look and check back what are the design interventions can be possible is it possible to change the machinery design is it possible to change the workstation design is it possible to change the frequency of that particular operation is it possible to rearrange the manpower in that particular system however we have to keep that in mind ultimate productivity of the whole system cannot be compromised okay so this way we can use ovaku working posture assessment tool so let us understand what are the advantages and disadvantages so it's very easy to learn all of you must have learned till this time like we are discussing we, you, you can easily go and start implementing it it's very very easy tool before and after comparisons can be made to evaluate the effectiveness of the intervention so you know before intervention you have a typical uh, posture and after the intervention you have a typical posture you can you know readily uh, compare them uh, it has been improved or not improved okay so it's very very easy tool and uh, very advantageous tool uh, scores for each body part can be used to in epidemiological studies as i mentioned suppose uh, we had three two four right if that is the category now we need to understand for the higher value of the ultimate score which factor is causing major you uh, know uh, which is causing more um, impact which is uh, giving more impact to it so understanding that will give you a better understanding about the epidemiological studies in that particular sector and customization of the system to specific users need is very easy so you can do that very quickly and very easily so that is the advantages however we have some you know disadvantages as well trunk and shoulder postures categorizes are very very broad you know you do not have those detailing so that is um, not being considered in this but it's a very gross um, category only uh, back then arm and then legs so you do not have you know shoulder finger and all those things are not there also duration of exposure is not given importance it's only assess that particular posture it never gives you an understanding what is the impact of that particular posture if you are holding it for one hour for five hours or for uh, no whole eight hour shift or if you are holding it you know three times in a hour in an hour so there is no such uh, impact analysis has been done 
So, left and right arms are not assessed separately because if you look at the working habits, mostly people work with their dominant hand. Okay. So, uh, if you are a righty, then you will use your right hand. If someone is lefty, they will use the left hand. Now, however, in this particular tool, there is no such discrimination. You cannot understand what is happening with your uh, right hand and what is happening with your uh, left hand separately. However, we suggest that whenever we are using such tool, we we try to analyze or we try to understand the dominant hand of that particular person, dominant side of that particular person. Elbow and wrist positions are not considered as I mentioned earlier. So, for more detailing maybe we should go for some other tool. If you need those details, you should not go for was, you should go for the other tool. So, these are the disadvantages of this particular tool. What do you need? You need this particular worksheet that I showed uh, in this particular pictures in the slide. Okay, So, all this figure wise you need that uh, particular worksheet and you need a video recorder. Now, you can ask why video recorder? It is uh, suggested that if you take the video recording of the whole working posture after coming back to the laboratory, you can easily choose this posture to be uh, analyzed or that posture to be analyzed. So, you, you are suggested that you do a video recording, proper video recording because in this particular um, uh, particular uh, tool or technique, you do not have any kind of degree measurement, only the whole body uh, should be visible very clearly to depict the kind of posture that is there in the worksheet. Okay? So, these are the tools and uh, uh, tools required for wash analysis. Okay? That is all for today. Next class, we will go for Rula, Reva and many other tools. We will uh, discuss that also in this detail. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.